Yeah, welcome back to me. Shall I check to see if I'm in focus, sir? I think we'll get us just about. Welcome back to Voodoo Garage. I'm leaning over because I'm not sure if I'm in shot. Um, I'm here with Patrick today. We've had a ton of questions regarding the new Voodoo catch can kit for the Mark 7 ST and how to fit it. Um, although it's pretty simple, we thought we'd put together a little fitting video. I'm also going to write a blog up. Um, I'm going to follow him around with the camera a little bit. Won't be as glossy as usual because we haven't got George from Sinted Media here today. So I'm doing it all. Um, I'll try my best to get everything that I think we're going to need. Um, yeah, don't look too quick. Yeah, so, uh, do you want to give them a little what's in the box run through? I know it's not massive. But yeah, so obviously you've got your catch can itself. Um, this comprises of dipstick. Let um, me bring that a little bit closer, look, make sure that we can actually get it in. So I'll bring this over, look, and then you can give them a little look. look at what's what. You got that? Whoa, you're looking good on there, mate. What's that shopping channel? Do it like QVC, do it like QVC. Just uh, Right, you're hit them with it. Limited good, time man. only, you're not going to believe the price. <laughs> <laughs> so, then. like I said, dipstick. Um, that's got a nice little o-ring on there, so that's keep that sealed. This does come apart, so you can empty it. Um, and then you can see inside it's got a small doors to filter and that has actually got It's got baffles in there as well. Baffle, yes, yeah. wire so it's fully baffled, it's got a dipstick. You can also drain it without having to split oh, yeah. it. So drain it's got, it's got a full drain plug on it. Obviously everything's all ringed and sealed so you shouldn't get anything escaping in the engine bay. Um, then we've got two pipes complete with correct fittings. That makes life easy. It's important to note on these that these are a proper air equip um, dash six, is it? That's bigger than dash that's six. That's bigger than dash, dash six. Like dash ten. Yeah. So no, it's not. Ten smaller. No, it's it's it's, it's a big. size. It's I'll a find size. the size. But these are a proper air equipped fitting, so it's not like the ones that you see where it looks like a fitting and then it's got a little jubilee clip inside it, which is prone yeah, to so failure. That really. obviously helps when you come to fit it. If you need to move it before you nip it, and then it'll stay in the right place. So yeah, always helps. Bracket, of course, in a nice crackle black finish. Yeah. Uh, with counter sunk holes, which leaves a nice finish. No. Again, with that, I box. did. Um, so when we when we did this originally, we used a different catch can. I know that can't see me, but I'll talk to you. So um, we used a different catch can, which um, used a different bracket system, didn't it? And it kept snapping. And I know yeah. that a few people had those issues. Um, so we, that's when we designed this, which you'll see so where that fits. Ball fitting. Yeah, you'll see where that fits in a minute. So it's really, it's a little bit thicker. It's really, really strong. You're not going to break that, no matter whether you're circuit racing, whatever. So the you problem doing. you've got is the fact it does break, where it drops down to. You strengthen the belt. Auxiliary belts yeah. coming off. And yeah. All sorts of trouble. Cool. Then, of course, we've got the two fittings for the catch the can themselves. Um, so one side is a tapered fitting. Um, the other side isn't. But that's you can get two O-rings, so the O-ring must go on the side that's not tapered, because of course the tapered fitting is what seals, and that leads to that, and that side goes into the catch can. So all in all, not a extremely complicated bit of kit, but necessary. So, right, quick overview of what tools you're going to need. First of all, we've got a three mil Allen key uh, that's used to fit the bracket onto the catch can. We've got an adjustable spanner. Uh, I do recommend an adjustable because these are just over 25 mil and you can easily tape up the jaws of the adjustable spanner so as not to damage the fittings. Um, trim tool if you've got one available, a flathead screwdriver will do the job, that's just to take the original pipe coming off. Um, and finally, ratchet, or yeah, you probably only be able to get to it with a ratchet. Um, extension, 18 mil deep socket, um, half inch off the eights, it will do. Right, to begin with, uh, we're going to fit these fittings into the catch can. So, remove your bungs. These to stop anything getting in there whilst it's on its way to you. Now, like I said before, these have got an O-ring on there, so you don't want to go over tight. You just want to feel the O-ring squish a little bit, uh, and that'll be sufficient. So, always make sure you do it by hand first, obviously, so as not to cross that it. Another thing to note is make sure that your dipstick's tight and the body's tight. Don't just go ahead and fit it without checking that because obviously you don't want it dropping in bits. So you can see it's very minimal the amount you've got to tighten it. And you can just feel a nice little nip. 
as you can see no damage whatsoever being caused when you wrap the jaws yeah that's those fittings in um, next I'm going to fit the bracket once we fit the bracket uh, we should then be able to take this over um, remove the two nuts pop it onto where it's going to sit um, and then we'll tackle the pipes so Right, as you can see, those are in there, they're only just nipped. Um, I wouldn't recommend going all the tight with these because you will round them off. Like I said. Could you pull the threads on the hollow though? Possibly you if, you, if you go mad. Yeah. Um, we could work out a torque setting, but to be honest with you, a small you know, little nip will be sufficient. Um, I wouldn't recommend lock tighten it because again it's going into an aluminium thread. So the last thing you want is if you go to remove it to empty it and you pull the threads out, essentially it's knackered. Right, so that's nice and secure. As you can see those are the two studs that are the mounting point for the catch cam. Uh, like I said these are an 18mm nut and they will need a deep socket. Um, you probably noticed that there is only three holding it on there. Now I would imagine you're probably okay taking two off um, and your engine's not going to fall out. However, because I've got the facilities, I am supporting the engine. You probably see there's a jack in there. If you do support the engine, just remember it is an aluminium sump, so make sure you've got some on there. Um, we use a hockey puck, yep. believe it or not. So, right, I'll go ahead and take them off um, and then we'll pop the catch can down into the situation. Good like example. So. <laughs> so, as you can see, um, there's a male torx fit in there. Um, you may not have that, just be aware if you haven't got one of them, you might need it. Um, nine times out of ten you can get away with just tightening that back down and it will go all the way back in. Again, we've got, we've got the facilities so easiest way for me to get these off is I'll pop them in vice um, and then I'll come back once I've got these off. So I've removed the nuts. Like I say, I would say there's, there's a 50 50 chance that these are going to come out, so just please make sure you've got the facilities to remove the nuts. You don't want to damage the thread by getting them in some more grips or something like that. You need to make sure um, you can get them off, otherwise, you're not really going to be able to do this job if these come out. You're going to end up having to just put them back in and, and abandon it. So, the, fit, the um, size of the Torx is E10 on the top. Um, as you can see, you can just wind those back in and then we can carry on with job once you've got them back in. Right, so we're about ready to fit the catch can. I've popped the studs back in the mounting. Um, just be careful when you're putting this in there because it is a tight spot. And obviously, there's quite a lot of um, metal parts there. It will scratch if you push it down there and you know, you're not careful. Um, so these pipes are fine to move back being watched that way and then I just swoop over like that. Now if you look closely you can see there's quite a bit of adjustment on this. Um, common sense you want to be pushing it as far back as possible and rotate it clockwise on the studs then that gives you the maximum amount of room between your alternator pulley and your catch can. You finished. So, as I said, make sure you keep that over to it. Let me just try and get in there so I can see. As far back towards the coolant or expansion tank uh, as you can, and obviously just try and keep it twisted clockwise. And then just get one nipped up, and that should hold it there. Yeah, and then you can just get the other one. Um, again, these are quite quite a large stud and nut. I think they're about an M12. Um, so you're never going to snap them, so just give them a good nip. Obviously, if you are using power tools or air tools, don't go billy or because you'll, you'll just dig down into the bracket. So, that's it. Worth noting, we are in operational work. Yeah, we are in operation here, and Callum's been extremely careful to uh, 
Keep it's a nice up. one. Use your big gun, Callum. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so next thing to remove is your original breather pipe, it's a corrugated plastic. Um, so what I like to do is, just, just to be safe, is remove these two plugs and get that wiring out of the way. Um, again, majority of you are probably going to have a tuned car, probably going to have um, this takeoff for the boost, boost gauge and turbo smart, so just pop them out of the way. There is a small plastic clip down there, if you can see it, um, it's just a push fit, so if you can get behind it, which I managed, and just pop it out. So these small clips here, they're a bit of a pain, if you squeeze them at either side you'll see that the two tabs come up, and then just give them a wiggle, and you can see, so there's two tabs there, and you can see we squeeze them, it just forces them out. Right pipes. Take note, they are different angles, I don't know if you can see that. And also, slightly different lengths. Um, you look like you are doing a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> so, the one with the more acute angle is for the top and shorter pipe um, goes on this one. Down there, yeah. yeah, you can see it's quite a bit. Yeah. There we go. And then obviously I'll put it in A little tip, get the get top, the Patrick's top tip. Patrick's top tip. Well, get the fitting on first. Um, and just get the angle that you're gonna need. Um, as you can see it's gonna have to come up on an angle to go over the alternator. Um, so if you get it on the angle it needs, just just nip it finger tight, preferably with voodoo, shall we? Absolutely. Um, and then, as you can see, you literally just bend that side over. Push it up. And that, just be careful of the o-ring, make sure it's lined up and it's going in straight. And there she goes. Little spanner, uh, adjustable spanner. And you should be able to just get down and give it a little nip when you've got the right size. Again, these are a tapered fitting. You don't have to go below. Really um, it's worth holding this side of the pipe so that it doesn't spin round. Give it a little nip. So that's the catch can all fitted. Just make sure that your pipes are not fouling anywhere. And then last job, make sure you plug all these back in. Because you will end up with some engine faults otherwise. It might be worth noting, I'm not sure. It's common sense, but make sure your ignition's off before you start unplugging stuff. Otherwise you will get a full cord.